Hi, sixth grade, week three. We made it three weeks. I am so proud of you, beyond impressed of what you've accomplished in the first two weeks. Um, keep going strong in the third and don't lose momentum. Keep to that schedule, keep taking breaks, and keep asking questions when you need to. Um, this week, we're going to read The Mysterious Mr. Lincoln on page 545 in our textbook. And this one should be um, fairly easy for you because we already have background knowledge on Abraham Lincoln from social studies and from reading Chasing Lincoln's Killer. If we get back to school soon, we'll finish that book. It might be saved for seventh grade. We'll have to figure that out later. Um, the vocab for the week is also on page 545, and some of them you'll be working with in the Google Classroom um, on the vocab exercise. Some of them you just need to know what they are for the story, so make sure you go over those words before you read. Um, this story is by Russell Friedman. We'll go ahead and begin on page 545. Abraham Lincoln wasn't the sort of man who could lose himself in a crowd. After all, he stood six feet four inches tall, and to top it off, he wore a high silk hat. His height was mostly in his long, bony legs. When he sat in a chair, he seemed no taller than anyone else. It was only when he stood up that he towered above other men. At first glance, most people thought he was homely. Lincoln thought so too, referring once to his poor, lean, lank face. As a young man, he was sensitive about his gawky looks. Gawky means clumsy or awkward. But in time, he learned to laugh at himself. When a rival called him two-faced during a political debate, Lincoln replied, I leave it to my audience. If I had another face, do you think I'd wear this one? So he was kind of a funny guy. According to those who knew him, Lincoln was a man of many faces. In repose, repose means state of rest or inactivity, and I'm pretty sure we've had that word before. He often seemed sad and gloomy, but when he began to speak, his expression changed. Page 546. The dull, listless features, listless here means lifeless, lacking in interest or energy, Dropped like a mask, said a Chicago newspaper man. The eyes began to sparkle, the mouth to smile. The whole countenance was wreathed in animation so that a stranger would have said, why this man, so angular and solemn a moment ago, is really handsome. Lincoln was the most photographed man of his time, but his friends insisted that no photo ever did him justice. It's no wonder. Back then, cameras required long exposures. The person being photographed had to freeze as the seconds ticked by. If he blinked an eye, the picture would be blurred. That's why Lincoln looks so stiff and formal in his photos. We never see him laughing or joking. Artists and writers tried to capture the real Lincoln that the camera missed, but something about the man always escaped them. His changeable features, his tone, gestures, and expressions seem to defy description. Defy here means resist or oppose. Today, it's hard to imagine Lincoln as he really was, and he never cared to reveal much about himself. In company, he was witty and talkative, but he rarely betrayed his inner feelings. According to William Herndon, his law partner, he was the most secretive, reticent, shut-mouthed man that ever lived. Reticent means reserved or tending to speak little. In his own time, Lincoln was never fully understood, even by his closest friends. Now we are on the top of page 547. Since then, his life story has been told and retold so many times. He has become much, as much a legend as his flesh and blood human being. While the legend is based on truth, it is only partly true, and it hides the man behind it like a disguise. The legendary Lincoln is known as Honest Abe, a humble man of the people who rose from a log cabin to the White House. There's no doubt that Lincoln was a poor boy who made good, and it's true that he carried his folksy manner and homespun speech to the White House with him. He said howdy to visitors and invited them to stay a spell. He greeted diplomats while wearing carpet slippers, called his wife mother at receptions, and told body jokes at a cap cabinet meetings. Lincoln may have seemed like a common man, but he wasn't. His friends agreed that he was the one of the most ambitious people they had ever known. Lincoln struggled hard to rise above his log cabin origins, and he was proud of his achievements. By the time he ran for president, he was a wealthy man, earning a large income from his law practice and his many investments. As for the nickname Abe, he hated it. No one knew him. No one who knew him well ever called him Abe to his face. They addressed him as Lincoln or Mr. Lincoln. Lincoln is often described as a sloppy dresser, careless about his appearance. In fact, he patronized the best tailor in Springfield, Illinois, buying two suits a year. That was at a time when many men lived, died, and were buried in the same suit. It's true that Lincoln had little formal ed education, as he would have pronounced it. In almost everything he learned, he taught himself. 
All his life he said thar for there, git for get, and kin for can. Even so, he became an eloquent public speaker who could hold a vast audience spellbound and a great writer whose finest phrases still ring in our ears. He was known to st sit up late into the night discussing Shakespeare's plays with White House visitors. He was certainly a humorous man, famous for his rollicking stories, but he was also moody and melancholy. Melancholy means mournful or gloomy. That's also a word we've had before. Tormented by long and frequent bouts of depression. Humor was his therapy. He replied on his yarns, a friend observed, to whistle down sadness. Page 548. He had a cool, logical mind, trained in the courtroom, and a practical, common-sense approach to problems. Yet he was deeply superstitious, a believer in dreams, omens, and visions. Omens means things believed to be signs or future events. We admire Lincoln today as an American folk hero. During the Civil War, however, he was the most unpopular president the nation had ever known. His critics called him a tyrant, a hick, a stupid baboon who was unfit for his office. As commander-in-chief of the armed forces, he was denounced as a bungling amateur who meddled in military affairs he knew nothing about. But he also had his supporters. They praised him as a far-sighted statesman, a military mastermind who engineered the Union victory. Lincoln is best known as the great emancipator, the man who freed the slaves. Yet he did not enter the war with that idea in mind. My paramount object in this struggle is to save the Union, he said in 1862, and is not either to save or destroy slavery. As the war continued, Lincoln's attitude changed. Eventually, he came to regard the conflict as the moral crusade to wipe out the sin of slavery. Paramount means main or most important, and crusade means struggle for a cause or belief. No black leader was more critical of Lincoln than the fiery abolitionist writer and editor Frederick Douglass. Douglass had grown up as a slave. He won his freedom by escaping to the North. Early in the war, impatient with Lincoln's cautious leadership, Douglass called him preeminently the white man's president, entirely devoted to the welfare of white men. Later, Douglass changed his mind and came to admire Lincoln. Several years after the war, he said this about the 16th president. His greatest mission was to accomplish two things. First, to save his country from dismemberment and ruin, and second, to free his country from the great crime of slavery. Take, taking him for all in all, measuring the tremendous magnitude of the work before him, considering the necessary means to the ends, and surveying the end from the beginning, infinite wisdom has sel seldom sent any man into the world better fitted for his mission than Abraham Lincoln. And that is the end of our story. The following page, 549, has information about the author. And then the next page on 550 is your response questions. And you'll find all your assignments in Google Classroom. And if you're having trouble navigating um, the classroom and you need help with anything, please reach out to one of your teachers. Um, we're all using the same format, so we should all be able to help you. It'll take a while to get used to, but once you do, it'll be your new normal and we'll be um, really great at it by the time we get back to school. I hope you are all well, getting outside, taking breaks, and staying healthy.